So hi guys, I'm outside as you can see, just come out for my daily exercise. So you've probably been back and seen some of our other videos. We've been talking a lot about running. Phil did a, a fabulous stretch video for runners because we're pretty aware that a lot of people are using running as their main source of exercise because uh, a lot of us don't have equipment at home. So running's become like the mainstay in terms of keeping fit. Um, we've also recently, Phil's recent video on sprinting was just to basically add a bit of variety into the running thing and to help you get some speed up with your sprints, which will then help you with your running. So if you haven't watched that, go back and watch it. But today, I just thought to myself, there might be people out there who just don't like running. You don't enjoy the process of running or the thought of it sends them cold. So maybe they just enjoy coming out for a walk and there might be things you can do to make your walks a little bit more interesting. So one thing I would recommend everybody does is either get themselves a pedometer or download an app on your phone that measures, use your GPS to measure the route. It's a great way of motivating yourself to go further because what happens is the app will record where you've been, it'll record the mileage and then you can keep a track and keep a journal of how far you've been going and almost make yourself a little bit of a challenge to go even further because let's be honest, walking is a fantastic calorie burn. It really works in terms of burning calories and it's not stressful on your joints. So it's a great way of getting some fresh air, getting out there and just seeing some of the sights around where you live that you don't usually see. Anyway, so I'm just walking up a hill now, which is probably why I'm a bit out of breath. Okay, one thing you might find when you get into your walking that you enjoy it more than you thought you did. So maybe joining a walking club. There's plenty of local walking clubs around you could join and it might be something you could add in to your daily routine just to have a bit of a change in your exercise rather than just go to the gym or walk on a treadmill, get yourself out in the countryside and have a walk. Also, joining a walking club will open up a load of walks that you didn't even know existed. So definitely recommend that. Also, one thing I would recommend if you're gonna get into walking is to download some podcasts. It's a great time when you're out walking to educate yourself or even just listen to some podcasts for fun. There's loads of comedy ones out there, short stories. But for me, I use the time to learn. So I'm not good at laying in bed, reading a book. What will happen is I'll get into bed, get the book out, fall asleep. I think you all understand that. So what I'll tend to do is use my journeys, whether it be walking or in the car to learn. So I'll download podcasts, audio books, and that's the time when I'll learn. So really recommend downloading some podcasts onto your phone and using them when you're walking. Also, it's a great time to rehearse things that you wanted to do. Like, that sounds silly, but what a great time to rehearse a speech. Or if you've got something coming up, like an awkward conversation with an employee or someone at work, get out for a walk, clear your head and rehearse it. Take a bit of paper, even have a pen in your pocket and make notes. Or if you've got your phone, put some memos on your phone and things you need to remember when you get back. It's a really good time to clear your head and do some things like that that you wouldn't be able to do at home because you can't concentrate because there's cleaning to do and washing. So it's a brilliant time to add those sort of things in when you haven't got anything else to distract you. So yeah, rehearsing a speech, rehearsing an awkward conversation, anything like that that you can't do at home, you can't focus on, is a great thing to do out on a walk. Okay, so there's a few things you can do to make your walk a bit more interesting. How about making the walk a bit more challenging? So next is the thing I do to make my walks a bit more challenging. Okay, so some of you guys might know, you might not know, that I used to do um, boxing competitively. So when I was training at the sort of peak of my training, every single boxing session started with running. We went outside and we ran. To be fair, it's probably put me off running for life because it was really hard. But what we used to do, used to go out in a group and what the instructor, the coach would do is make us run to a lamppost and then back to him and then we'd walk then we get to the next lamppost we'd run to the following one back to him and it'd be like a sprint and then we'd come back to him and then we'd walk for a bit so why not maybe adopt that principle if you're not a fantastic runner or if you just don't enjoy running because most streets you go down will probably have lampposts at regular intervals so this is my idea for you Say, for example, let's have a look at this street here. 
ahead of me here, you can see there's lampposts. So if you're a complete beginner, what I'd say is walk between a lamppost and then the next lamppost, jog to the next lamppost, then walk to the next one and just start like that. Then next time you come out, try this interval. Walk to a lamppost, jog to the next one and sprint to the next one and go in little threes like that. So you get the gist, you get the gist. Once you get used to the, the roads around where you live, you'll start to learn how the, the roads you generally run from home, how the lamppost is set out. So if you've been walking to one, jogging to the next, next time you go out, try the walk, jog, sprint. Maybe next time you go out, try walk to one, jog for two, and then walk. So just keep varying it up. Um, and you'll just find every time you go out, it improves. It's a good way of maybe transitioning from just going out for a walk to adding just that little bit of higher impact stuff in if you want to. Okay, another thing I sometimes do to make the walks a bit more interesting is adding exercises. So what I do is make myself a list. So today I've got a list. We've got press-ups off a tree or bench. We've got dips off a tree or bench. We've got star jumps. We've got step ups onto tree or bench. And then we've got a split squat of some kind. Okay, so I've got the list. I'm gonna do 10 of each. And then on my walk somewhere, I'm gonna stop and find a spot and tick off those exercises. And then once you've ticked your exercise off, walk home and that's just made you walk a little bit more interesting and every time you go out maybe improve upon it add another exercise or add some reps so each time you go out for a walk either the list gets longer or the exercises get a little bit more challenging and just challenge yourself a bit more every time you go out so today let's see on our little walk where we can fit in the five exercises i've put in let's do it somewhere to do step up so I'm going to make sure I do 10 each leg. Okay I've come across another park bench, get on with my dips. So remember bent legs is easier, straight legs is harder. Remember, don't drop any lower than elbow, shoulders lower than elbows, she'll hurt your shoulders, but remember the lockout, that's the most important bit. Okay, I'm going to do Bulgarian split squats with a little low fence that I found to put the back toe on. If you can't do those, remember you can put your front foot up onto a kerb or just do flat ones. So literally toe up, take a stride, and then you've got 10 each leg. So guys, middle of a humongous field. I'm gonna get my 10 star jumps done. Oh! So that's my, all my, uh, my five exercises completed. Um, got a few funny looks from people walking the dogs. And it's really cold and windy today. You can see the clouds above me there. It's not like we've had previous. It's definitely a lot cooler and I think it's gonna rain. So I'm glad I got out and did this now. So there's other ways you can do things if you don't want to use the lamppost idea or this, you can download some tunes onto your phone and every time the chorus comes on, you can run, you can, you can do timers, set yourself 30 seconds run, 30 second walk, like a normal interval. So there's loads of ways you can do it. Um, so that's how to make your walks a bit more interesting. Next, I want to talk a little bit about walking posture and walking technique. Okay, you wouldn't imagine you would have to think about how to walk and how important it was to get the right posture, but it is. Um, first point is feet. Now, feet, toes should be pointing forward, but you, are, you can have a little bit of a turnout on the toes, so don't worry if you do, but obviously they want to be generally pointing forward. Now, in 
Imagine you've got a string attached to the top of your head and someone's pulling you up. I want you to lift out from the hips as well. So you're not arching the back. Now to stop the back arching, you want to tuck the tailbone a little bit, almost clenching your glutes a little bit. So it might feel a little bit forced, but you've just got to imagine you're really standing tall. The problem is when people go out for a walk, they're on their mobile phones and that creates that hunched posture where your shoulders are over. So stringing your skull and imagine you're stretching up. Okay, so keeping that very tall posture. Try and keep the chin level by trying to look always about 20 feet ahead. That will keep the chin level and stop that slump posture. Okay, people don't realize how important the arms are when you're walking. You want to try and keep the arms at 90 degrees. So you're trying to keep, don't clench the fist, but keep them in like a half fist. So they're not clenched, but they're not like this. So they're just a half clench. Elbow at 90 degrees. And when you're striding, try not to bring the hand across the center line and also don't let the hand come any higher than the sternum i know it seems like there's a lot to think about but it's just trying to keep relaxed a lot of times people's shoulders tend to be very shrugged and up so give them a big squeeze up and then shrug them down help them relax so the arm posture is really important because that's where a lot of your speed and power comes from your arms you'll remember in phil's video when he talked about sprinting how important the arms are in getting speed into your sprints it's the same with walking the arms are important so as you're walking the arms at a right angle is moving forward it's not moving up they're moving forward okay not clenching the fist relax the shoulders and keep that chin level and looking forward okay, i've tried to move my camera a bit out of the wind because i can hear it's so windy today so we, we've got the posture okay we've got the arm movement we've worked out how to do the arms and, and where to keep the chin the next important thing is the feet so with the feet you want to use a rolling action with the feet. So it's heel, roll to toe. Now, that's why it's important that you wear flexible shoes because if you're wearing really stiff shoes, you won't be able to roll the feet like that. So you strike with the heel, roll through the toe as you take the other leg through. Now, Phil also mentioned this in his sprint video that people try and overreach with the front foot and that's so true, true for walking. When you walk, the speed comes from the back foot. So as you want to make sure that you leave it as long as possible before the back foot pushes off. That's where your length of stride and your speed will come from. So heel, roll to toe, stride through, and then leave it so as long as you can before you push off the back foot. That's the important bit. Don't overreach with the front foot. That's the key to walking. So you've got the posture, you've got the arm position and the feet. Now, at first you might find because of that heel to toe action, your shins hurt a little bit because you're not used to using that muscle in the front of your shin, you'll get used to it. Try walking with these new postural uh, cues maybe for five minutes and then go back to your normal style of walking then practice again for five minutes. You'll soon get used to it and you'll find that walking with good posture, thinking about what you're doing with your shoulders, your chin, your arms, your feet, that you won't end up with so many hip and back injuries or niggles from walking so much. It can really help. So it's just worth listening to a note no, you a few things down next time you go for a walk and just have a think about it when you're walking okay let's move on wow it is cold today guys so last little bit from me on the on the walking thing as you're getting close to home maybe a minute or so from home have a look around for a decent sized curb at the side of the road it's a good opportunity before you get home to stop near a curb and give your calves a good stretch so find a curb and i'll show you how to stretch off those calves because it's true that when you're walking calves take a serious pounding so let's do that next before we get home okay so i'm nearly home i found a decent curve so what you want to do is literally put your toe on the curb and just let that heel drop off it's a nice big curb because i've got big feet so it needs to be a big curb hold it down there release and go again and really push that heel to the floor i would do at least five Decent holds at that position, release and go again, and then change over. Hold, release, hold again. And I can tell mine stretch off because already I'm touching the floor with the heel, so that's great. Because they do, your calves do get tight when you're walking. Okay, so that's the heels. You can also use the curb to stretch off the hamstrings, place the heel on the curb, obviously be careful of the road, this is a quiet side road, toe up, back nice and flat and lean in. But in terms of any other stretches, 
um, we've got a full stretch video for runners which Phil did look back on some of our previous YouTube videos as a full stretching routine for, for people who like to run, really working on those hips and leg joint. So have a look at that and uh, have a go. And let me know what you think about this one with the, the walking. Let me know if you've tried any of the things I've suggested in this video and I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Right, uh, that's Mel's latest video where she gives you a, a few different ways of brightening up those walks. Um, obviously focusing on your posture a little bit, um, giving you a few exercises to do while you're out on your walk and adding in a few bit of uh, variables in terms of pace, again just to keep it a little bit different. Um, interesting take on because you don't really think that much about walking you just think oh i walk from a to b and back but it's you know you do need to keep things a little bit fresh a little bit different more than anything just so you you stay motivated and you keep looking after yourselves um for my next video i think i'm gonna i've been baking today so I think I'm going to do another cooking one. I think I'm going to bake something. I'm not sure what yet, um, but I'll get my thinking cap on and come up with something. Obviously, it'll be something healthy. It won't just be cookies or whatever else. Um, as always, guys, uh, like and subscribe. Um, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Let us know if there's any videos that you'd like to do or if there's anything that you struggle with that maybe me or Mel can help with. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for supporting us. And stay safe during lockdown. Keep watching Mel and Phil. Keep yourselves motivated and just keep going. See you later. Ooh.